Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've got some fun stuff from Down Under. I'm Richard, let's get into it, okay? All right, this comes from Woke Preacher Clips. You might know uh, that channel on YouTube. He, they, she, uh, I don't know who it is, but uh, they will put up, he or she, put up the most ridiculous videos uh, from Christians, so-called. And uh, this is from Australia, Michael Bird, who's an author. I've actually read some of his work. Um, it's pretty good, actually. So I don't, I'm not, uh, I don't know what's going on here. And this isn't necessarily a woke thing per se, but when you have problems, oh, woke preacher clips just posted. Look at that. Um, when you want to curry favor with the world, that's the problem. And we're going to go ahead and examine this a little bit and bring some scripture to bear, drag the feet of Michael Byrd to the fire, as well as the homosexual activist uh, as well, and drag him over to the fire of the gospel, and uh, we'll go from there. But let's go ahead and just play this, and uh, we'll, we'll look at it, okay? 2017 Australian Christian Mummy Conference. Now, as a homosexual atheist, I'm, in, uh, I'm melting! Melting! So this guy's like John Stewart for here. Stephen Colbert. I taught religious education to some to some uh, students, and I asked them a very provocative question. I said to them, "Did Jesus ever have an erection?" Did Jesus have an erection? I believe he did. Multiple erections throughout the course of his life. Would he have an orgasm? Oh well, yeah. No, we, all, we all have. Hmm? Would he have <laughs> helped that along if he was a red-blooded normal man? Oh, what do you mean by helped it along? You mean like, would he have uh, choked the chicken? Exactly. He brought it up. Now, I don't know about you. You might be thinking, well, yeah, why are you talking about this? That's a little, this is a little ridiculous. Well, this is the world, right? And the world, uh, and that's part of this channel, being contramundum against the world, uh, which actually comes from Athanasius in the 4th century. But pro mundo, I kind of uh, added to it a little bit. Because you and me, at some point in our lives, were in the world. We were against Christ. And that's why I do this for an evangelistic and apologetic to drag people's feet to the fire of the gospel and say, look, this is reality, right? The world has fallen. Christ is king. Turn to him. Period. Now, this isn't helpful at all. What he should have done, Michael Bird should have done, was simply give the gospel to this man or, or challenge this man in his own worldview. But instead, he's talking about I don't even want to say the word. You just heard it. But with Jesus. Now, I don't want to talk about that in general with normal dudes who are broken and sinful, let alone with the Lord of glory. But Michael Bird needs to, I think, get back to his text and read 2 Corinthians 10.5. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised up against the knowledge of God and every thought captive to obey Christ. Now, <laughs> this isn't obeying Christ. This isn't taking every thought captive at all. Certainly not. Now, this is obviously the goal and we don't always do that. And that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need redemption and forgiveness of sin because we don't take thoughts captive, do we? We sin. We sin against our children, our wives, our bosses, whomever, ourselves, the Lord, of course. I mean, because all sin is against him ultimately. But what we need to do is be against this nonsense because then he just opens it up more. Oh, did he choke the chicken? You mean that? 
And then it's like, oh, you know, he's getting backed into this corner and it's just stupid. Why? Why, why would you, why would you invite that? It's unnecessary. Do not conform the, to the pattern of this world, Romans 12, 2 says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This doesn't renew anybody's mind. This takes your mind to the gutter, as they say. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and perfect will. So what's God's will? You know, it's not some treasure hunt, Easter egg thing, you know, scavenging the universe for the will of God, you know, and a lot of times you have that when you're 18, 20, 25 years old and you should I get married? Should I do this? What's God's will? So flying here. What, what should I do? God's will. Like Mike Pence. Remember that at the debate? It's like, but I don't have silver hair, so you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, <laughs> this is God's will that you obey Christ, that you take every thought captive, right? That's a little different than talking about this subject. But if we don't call things like this out, then it just, it just hangs there. And the world is like, yeah, you're just like us. But we're not just like the world. We're not. Because not only do we believe in a guy who rose from the dead and had all sorts of miracles, we believe in a God who created, I think, I believe the scripture is clear, recently. He didn't use some materialistic evolutionary means. God is an intimate, close God. He's not a distant, far God, or he's not a low and weak God. But he's both strong and powerful, but also near. Lastly, Hebrews 1, long ago and many times in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, mark that, last days, madness, folks, eschatological people turning over every rock and thinking, last days, Jesus, he's coming, Antichrist, tribulation, rapture. These are the last days when Hebrews is being written. So remember that. But in these last days, when Hebrews is written, probably around 60 or so AD, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. So there it is. God created, right? He, Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint, like a thumbprint of his nature and upholds the universe by the word of his power. So this is Jesus doing these things. Not some other means, not Jesus just being a man, a red-blooded male, as the guy goes on, choking the chicken, possibly, you know. Oh, well, he might have had this, uh, but he didn't have, and it's like, why? Why? I mean, you're just, you're just dancing on the line of heresy and division. That's all you're doing. I mean, and that's all heresy is, is false teaching and a teaching that seeks to divide. That's what it seeks to do. Even if you're trying to be cool, you're trying to curry favor with the world. But no, the world is passing away. That's why I'm against the world. That's why I hope you're watching this channel and gleaning from it. Because the world is passing away and so are its lust. The desires of the world, the world, the, the way the broken system is, it's, it's fallen. It's going away. All things are going to be brought new and a new heavens and a new earth will come. And that's a difference. And that's what most people don't see. Most religions, all religions besides faithful Christianity, does not see. Because long ago in times, many times in many ways, God spoke to our fathers. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. His son being the Lord Jesus. So be contramundo pro mundo. If you found this helpful, um, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you dislike, you can't do that anymore. But if you want, you can put a little comment and say, dislike. Um... I appreciate the feedback and people can see if you disliked it because YouTube's pretty stupid when they're removing it because of bullying or whatever nonsense. They just remove it because of other reasons, but that's another video. Anyway, until next time, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.